guys, my name is Becky and welcome back to another episode of DIY Diaries. You might know me from making a lot of sweet, sweet DIY projects in our studio or in other people's spaces, giving other people makeovers, but this series specifically is all about my house and the DIY projects and design choices I make here. So welcome. And before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by ThreadUp. If it's your first time just jumping in to one of these episodes, I'm gonna have my amazing editors make a sweet little clip to catch you up on what you might have missed. This DIY I am lovingly calling the Franken drawers. Sounds easy. I'm a little nervous. Woo! All these steps before, we were just playing games. Now we're doing real sports. Guys, if I pull this off by myself, you can do anything, okay? Anything. I also have no idea what kukar wood is. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting that. <gasps> and I'm so happy with how this is starting out, you guys. All right, now you know what you're in for. Feeling excited? Consider subscribing while you're here. We have a second to do it. It just makes my heart so happy, guys. So let's get to what we're doing today. Today, we are in a very special room that I often have a hard time describing. It is the second bedroom upstairs in our house, and basically I've taken it over as my very own personal giant walk-in closet. There, I said it. My house isn't that big, but when I say it like that, it feels like I have a massive house, but <laughs> I love this space. It's just that when I moved in a while ago, um, I obviously decorated it once and really haven't changed it too much since, and I think it's time. This room feels very boho at the moment, which is not really how I describe the rest of my house. It leans a little bit more mid-century, 70s, English cottage, perhaps. Um, anyone who, who has seen my house, tell them what is my style, I don't know. But I don't think it's that boho, so I think this room is due for a change. And why I think a makeover of this space is actually perfect for the DIY Diaries series format is because I really want to take my time with this space. I don't have an exact final vision in mind yet. All I know is what I don't like and what I want to change. But I also think if you have the opportunity to take your time with making over spaces, you can make much more mindful choices and make sure you're doing things that you're actually going to love for a really long time. Another reason I think this is going to take me a while is because I really want to thrift a lot of things and find some really cool vintage pieces. And if you've ever been on the thrift secondhand vintage journey, you know that the secret to it is just time. You need to spend your time looking and re-looking and waiting for things to come up in listings um, to find those really amazing gems. So this might be a longer process, not long for you because you're watching the finished video. I hope it turned out great, <laughs> but longer for me because um, I'm going to be, again, making slow choices and just documenting however long this journey takes. But I'm glad you're here and uh, let's get started. So the first step to this process is just moving out the things I know I don't want in here. For example, this giant pendant screams super boho. I'm getting rid of that. Along with this couch, I'm going to be selling both these items and then using the profits from them to fund the new makeover. With the couch out of the way, I'm going to be moving this massive mirror I have back to that other wall. I've always had a hard time placing this mirror in this room with its relation to the window light I have going on. It's always been a bit funky to film in. I have a clip that maybe will explain this a little better. Editors, let's show them. Okay, it's definitely feeling brighter in here now that I've like uncovered half of the window, but I'm still getting this backlight issue. You know what I mean? Because if I brighten me, then it's just like I'm standing next to some portal to heaven. This is a weird room. This is such a weird room. What am I gonna do? Okay, this lighting is really good, so I might just have to shoot content, like not directly into the mirror and forego the perfect mirror selfie and just worry about like the lighting because this space is really good and the mirror behind me actually looks quite nice. So this might be the move. And the reason this all matters besides just having a good mirror selfie, which seems silly, is because I have to build like the set or design the room around what you're gonna see most in photos and video. So that's why I want to figure out the layout first, so then I can start to plan where I'm putting furniture and decor and stuff based on what you're going to see. So it might be this wall? Maybe? Alright, now we are ready to start making some real changes in this room. One thing that's always thrown me off is the color of these floors. They're very much a yellow wood, which doesn't match well with the teak mid-century wood colored vibe I want to go for. So I think, honestly, the simple and easiest solve here is to just cover it. So that brings me to my first of what I think will be many, many amazing thrift finds for this space. I found this massive area rug for only $40, you guys. 
secondhand. It has this amazing pattern that I think is the perfect mix between being neutral enough to cover a whole floor, and I think I found it for $40. <sighs> wow. <laughs> okay, because this rug is pre-loved, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a clean. I have this little mini portable steam cleaner. TBH, I haven't had the best luck using this in the past, but I'm feeling good about using it on a rug. I feel like that's my best chance because it's a hard surface. And I don't think I can make it worse. I can only make it cleaner, so let's give it a go. <laughs> also, I just wanna add this rug is actually in really great condition. The brown tones you're seeing are just part of the pattern. It's not dirt. <laughs> so uh, in case anyone was feeling very nervous for me, we're already starting with a not terrible canvas. So if you couldn't tell, I absolutely am obsessed with thrifting, mainly for two big reasons. One, you can often find more unique, interesting pieces with character that maybe have a story to them. And number two, you get to literally keep things out of the landfill by offering them a second life. Like that's so amazing. I just love that we can do that. Which brings me to today's sponsor, Thread Up. If you haven't heard us talk about ThreadUp on the channel before, let me introduce you because I love it and I know you will too. ThreadUp essentially is an online thrift store. So if you've ever been to like an in-person thrift store, you know the struggle of sifting through racks and racks and racks to maybe only find one or two pieces that you really love. But ThreadUp makes it so easy because they categorize everything for you. You can literally search all your favorite brands. You don't know how many times I've wished this when I'm in the thrift store. Like, can someone just find me the things I'm gonna like? in this sea of items, ThreadUp does that for you. You can search your favorite brands, you can put in your sizes, any specification about the item you're looking for, if it has a pattern, if it's a certain color. Like you can literally tick that all off and then your results are right there. It's so, so great. <laughs> Plus you get that added benefit of it being a sustainable option because you are shopping secondhand and also you usually get really great discounts because they are secondhand pieces. So let's open this box together and I'm gonna show you what I got. So we're heading into the thick of winter and I really wanted to add to my winter wardrobe with this haul and I think I did that with some pretty cool pieces. The best part is that everything was under $20 except for the last two things but I did get an amazing steal on those which I would tell you at the end. So first up is this bodysuit from the brand Out From Under and the part that really sold me is the sleeves have this amazing flare at the end um, or like a bell sleeve, a flare sleeve. How do I show you these and not make it strange? Sleeves! Either way, it's super retro in feel, which if you know me, this is right up my alley. Next up is this sweater. I was a little unsure buying it online because the pattern's a bit bold, but after seeing it in person, I love it so much. It's from Truly Madly Deeply and it has all these fun fall colors, plus the addition of these stripy sleeves. It's the perfect amount of just like so much, but also so right. <laughs> And then next up, another piece. If you know me, you'll know that this is like perfect for my wardrobe. It is a moto jacket, but it's a vest, so it's sleeveless. I love a good moto jacket, but at times when you wear it, that can really take over the whole outfit. So the fact that this is a vest is gonna make this the perfect layering piece for fall slash winter. It's so good to just have those things that if your outfit's feeling a little plain, like a simple sweater, you can just throw something like this over the top and all of a sudden your outfit is Super exciting. I mean, the sweater is already saying a lot, but you get the point. <laughs> and this faux leather vest was from the brand Misguided. Okay, these last two things, definitely my biggest deal of all time. So first up, we have this sweater. This sweater here is from the brand All Saints, which is one of my favorite brands, but their items can be a little pricey, which is why I love to thrift them. This one, for example, was estimated to retail for $230 but I got it on ThreadUp for $46.99. Yes, that's worth it. Such a steal. Okay, and then last up are these boots. They have the prettiest little gold toe detail, and the best part, they're literally brand new. The sticker is still on the bottom. They are from the brand Shoots. They are estimated to retail for $238, and I got them on ThreadUp for $61.99. So if you're interested in trying out ThreadUp as well, you can actually get 30% off your first order and free shipping with my code SORRYGIRLS at the link below. These guys. 
here. Okay, so one of the pinnacle furniture items from mid-century design is the modular wall shelf system. The most famous one being the one by Paul Cadovius. Um, some photos here of what it looks like. I'm sure you've all seen this before. Now to buy authentic vintage ones can literally cost you thousands of dollars. So today, I'm gonna try and DIY one for my space. So I did have two little floating shelves on this back wall before. They were really sad or really basic were not that well made. I made them, I'll admit, I'll admit it. it. <laughs> so to replace that, I'm gonna do something much bigger on the back corner. I already took some tape and kind of mocked out how many shelves I want, how I think it's gonna look, and wrote down some loose measurements so I could go pick up all the wood for this project. So I thought about a million different ways to make this, about how I could make a modular version where I could move all the shelves around, but I think for simplicity and like money, <laughs> to keep it cheap. Mine is not gonna be modular. When I screw the shelves in in their final place, it's where they're gonna stay, but honestly, do I think I'm gonna move them around anyways? No, probably not. But all that being said, I think I have a pretty solid plan, so let's get started. So I was actually able to make this shelf for a reasonable price, and that's because I used the lower end wood from the hardware store. You might overlook the knotty pine since it's not the cutest in its raw form, but there is a way you can make it look pretty good. After cutting my wood to size, I'm sanding each piece really well and then applying a wood conditioner. This will make the stain apply way more evenly on soft wood. Next up is stain, which I was able to find something pretty close to teak color, which is great. And last up is the clear coat finish. The absolute key to this is doing multiple coats, I think I did about four total, and making sure you sand well in between the coats with a very fine grit sandpaper. For the brackets, I picked these ones up from Ikea. The shape of them felt pretty similar to the original design, but to get the color right, I'm spray painting them with a dark brass colored spray paint. Pro tip, if you screw your brackets into a scrap piece of wood, you're easily able to spray all sides at once, and you can spray your screw heads a matching color all at the same time. Okay, let's assemble this thing. This piece was custom made to fit my space, but if you'd like the dimensions anyways, I'll put them up on our blog. Oh my God, it looks so good already. <laughs> I cannot wait to address the lighting in this room. It's coming because this is just something. These are basically decorative, okay? They're just to complete the illusion of like a modular system, but they basically just got screwed to the wall, which now I'm gonna screw the shelves too. So instead of just putting these shelves straight on the wall, I'm just putting them in these pieces of wood. You with me? Oh, you can't even see that because you're so straight on. <laughs> nope, that just made it worse. Haha, -ha. two brackets, a lot more to go. <laughs> okay, you guys, are you ready to see it? <laughs> this might be my new favorite thing I've ever built. I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but this one is definitely high up on the list. It looks so good. <laughs> And before anyone says anything, yes, this bracket is not the right size. They were out of stock of the little ones. I could only get three. So once they're back in stock, I will be replacing that. But shh, shh, you, I won't tell if you won't tell. <laughs> and while I was at it, I was in a shelf making fury. I made another one to go down here because I really like the look of a long, low, 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 low shelf, which I will decorate later. Hi guys. Okay, very exciting day today because last night I just found my dream piece for this space and after finding it 
I really think I understand the whole vision for this room. So this piece came from the account Retro Decors. It's run by Austin and AJ. They curate, source, the most amazing mid-century vintage furniture and decor items. I wish I could take everything from their shop, but I don't have room for it all. But uh, that's okay, because the one thing I did get is like... So last night I went over, picked up the piece, brought it here, and now I'm so excited to show it to you. It's like it was meant to be in this little corner. But wait, there's more. Um, okay, yes, wow. Wow. Are we done? Are we done? No, I have so many more ideas, but I feel like we could be done, because this is so good. This is so good. This is a Togo style matching chair and ottoman set that is straight out of the 70s in the most amazing soft brown like terry fabric. And I mean, words, I have none. Okay, the sun is going to set soon because winter and I need to do something about the lighting because I don't think I can go another day with the current sad lighting setup that's happening in here. So let's change that. Um, I think I maybe thrifted too many lights. I have so many cool options that I can't wait to place in here. Let me show you them. Also, these were amazing steals, by the way. This one here, so cool. It's got this frosted glass inner bit and then this metal shade. $15 I got this pendant for. Okay, okay, just gotta go somewhere. And then these next lights are wall sconces. They came as a set of two, 40 bucks, so $20 a light. I think the shape is really cool, but the base was gold, and I don't know, I just feel like gold's not really a color I'm having in this space. And since the addition of the chair and ottoman, I have dived, I've dived, I've dove, I've div divin? I'm diving. I'm diving headfirst into full on 70s in here, baby. So I've decided I'm gonna paint the base of this orange. It's a bit bold, but you know what? I wanna make some crazy choices in this space because it's my own house, I can do that. So they are orange now and they look like this. I think these are the coolest things. The shape is just really fun and I'm gonna put these somewhere on the wall. Undecided yet. so cute yes I'm undecided if this guy has a place to live yet but one thing I know for sure and that is the ceiling light has absolutely got to go it's not even really fully a light it's also a fan and I never turn it on but when you do it's a little squeaky so it's coming down for sure okay, Woo! okay. that wasn't so bad that wasn't so bad <laughs> and in its place is gonna go this beautiful giant paper shade globe light. I think it's gonna be so, so, so beautiful. Some bonus points to this guy as well is that the shade is made from rice paper and bamboo, which are both eco-friendly and sustainable items. I'm gonna link it below for you. It's also pretty affordable and comes in lots of different sizes. Okay, sun has officially begun to set. It's so dark in here. Let's see what this does. <laughs> the camera can't even handle it, hold on. Okay guys, I promise we are almost to the end of this entire room makeover, but there is one last DIY project I've had in my mental book, my mental DIY diaries that I've been meaning to do for a while, and it happens to be something in this room, so let's do it. I was gonna save it for another video because I'm worried this is a lot, but you know what? If we're gonna do a room makeover, we're gonna do a room makeover and we're gonna do every part of it. So for this DIY, we are throwing it all the way back to first DIY diary episode, the one that started this whole thing, and that was when I made the <laughs> Franken drawers. If you haven't seen that episode, go check it out. I will link it below. If you have, then you know what I'm talking about. I added a fourth drawer to these drawer units behind me, and I absolutely love that I did that. They have held up perfectly. They still work amazingly, but one thing I feel like I didn't nail was the aesthetics of it. I never loved the way the stain applied to these drawers, 
the gold handles are just not really, I don't know, I don't love them. So I think we can do better. I think we can do better. And that's what I'm gonna try and do today. So I've always been in love with these old industrial style filing cabinets, the ones that have the really long drawers and the really thin drawers. I think they're meant for putting papers in, probably um, like drafting papers, um, architectural things. I think the key to the ones I love so much are the ones that have the super long drawers and the super thin drawers. So that's kind of the style I'm gonna try and replicate with this. I'm not buying a new dresser because this one works functionally, but I think I can hack this one a little bit so it looks more in the style of the filing cabinets I've been loving. This project is definitely going to be a little more abstract in execution, and I'm not sure if it's going to turn out, but if there's ever a time to try out a bit more of a wacky DIY, it's probably in your own home where you can live with the consequences. And probably better I don't do it in someone else's house, you know? I think in my head this is gonna turn out awesome, so I'm really excited to try. Let's just jump into it. To create the illusion that these drawers are actually skinnier than they really are, I'm gonna be putting two drawer fronts per one drawer, and to do that, I'm using strips of, this is 1 8 inch MDF or a hardboard. You can buy this in a bunch of sizes. I just bought the two foot by four foot pieces and cut them all down, because easier to carry when they're smaller like that. So I have basically these fake drawer fronts that are gonna go on the old drawers, two per drawer, and they're gonna be using a combo of wood glue and a nail gun to secure them all into place. Okay. The first one is going to determine where all the other ones go. No! Okay. Now the secret is to leave the tiniest gap between the two so that they look like separate drawers, but still enough for this drawer to open fine. Sweet! <laughs> How risky is it to paint this with all my clothes right here? Pretty risky. But sometimes you gotta risk it for the biscuit. I don't even know what that means. Okay, and then lastly, to really bring the whole illusion together of this looking like one really long drawer instead of two units of drawers, I am gonna try using one of these silver handles per drawer on each side, a little bit closer to the outer edge. I think it should still open just fine. And then in the center bits, I actually bought these label holders. And what I've done is I've cut each one in half with a little hacksaw. So I have, where's the other half of this? Hello. So now the label holder looks like this and I'm gonna put them on either side of the two drawers so when they close, hopefully from far away, it's the illusion that there's the two handles, the label holder in the middle, and it's one long drawer. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work, but I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I hope. Guys, I, I was so ready to move on to final touches and finish this room because we're basically done. And then I remembered I wanted to paint this wall, like this whole wall. I should have done it first. Don't know why I'm doing it now, I guess, because I totally forgot. But as you can tell, it has a pink ombre on it, which is the last remaining evidence of the boho that used to be in here. And it absolutely cannot stay. It's gotta go. Did I really want to paint a wall today? No, I wanted to style cute things.
right guys, here it is. The final finished space through makeover is complete. I love the style of this room, whatever we're calling it, retro 70s, mid-century. I think it's so cool, especially where we came from before, the very boho, um, bright space. This is a total 180 and I am obsessed with how it's looking right now. I am curious to hear your thoughts on this room because I don't think this is gonna be everyone's style, so please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about this room below. I'm so curious to hear it. Anything that wasn't thrifted that I can link, I will do my best to link for you below. And one more thing before I leave you, a huge thank you to ThreadUp. Check them out. This is another dress by them. I love this one so much. If you'd like to get an additional 30% off your first order and free shipping, you can use my code Sora Girls and click the link in the description below. And if you just enjoyed this video and you like seeing me make over spaces in my house, then you will probably like the whole DIY Diaries playlist, which I will link for you below. Also, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to turn on the notification bell because we have weekly videos of all different kinds. My space, Kelsey's space, the office space. There's so much going on on the channel. Actually, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek right now of what is coming up next week. So hit that bell. Make sure you don't miss it. See you next time, guys. We're gonna be decorating for Christmas. Christmas. Last year, I wasn't able to do this. I am so excited to bring all of my Christmas dreams to life. My, honestly, my Pinterest Christmas dreams to life.